The first generation Subaru Impreza WRX hit Australian shores in 1994. It was instantly recognised for its value for money, all-round performance and offered a driving experience like nothing else in that end of the market. So now let's take a look at the original turbocharged Pocket Rocket. Built to tackle the World Rally Championship, the WRX's platform went on to conquer the sport worldwide, including winning a record-breaking 10 consecutive Australian Rally Championships. But initial sales of the WRX were a little slow off the mark, as customers thought the car was slightly overpriced. But motoring critics couldn't get enough of the WRX, and it wasn't long before people realised it's bang for your buck value. So what's it like to drive all these years later? Mind you, 21 years later. Well, it's actually still pretty good. The first thing you notice when you get in the car is that bonnet scoop, which sort of cries, uh, I think this could mean business. The second thing is when you fire it up, that distinctive WRX growl from that Boxster turbo engine. From the factory, the two-litre horizontally opposed turbocharged four-cylinder delivered 155 kilowatts and 270 newton metres of torque, which was pretty healthy for the time considering Ford's five-litre V8 in the 1994 Falcon XR8 produced 165 kilowatts and 388 newton metres by comparison. Combined with the fact that WRX weighed almost 400 kilos less and drove all four wheels, it achieved a 0 to 100 time in the high 6 seconds and fired down the quarter mile in the high 14 second bracket. Its constant all-wheel drive system meant the WRX would also achieve acceleration like this in wet weather conditions. And with four-wheel disc brakes and ABS, it wasn't bad at stopping either. Another part where this car shines is it's so diverse. You can just putt around town, around the suburbs like I am now, but then get it out on the open road or a racetrack and that's where the thing absolutely shines. It gives you the confidence of that all-wheel drive and you've got all the grunt of that turbo engine. You do a track day in one of these things and it'll just do the same thing, lap after lap after lap repetitively and you can just tell it's built so well and reliable. The ride's not too flash, you do just about feel every bump in the road, but I guess that's the nature of the beast. For me, probably the biggest letdown of the car is how the body itself feels a little bit tinny. When you shut the door, there's definitely nothing solid there. As for the interior, well, it's pretty bland to be honest. There's not much going on in here. Even gauge-wise, the standard gauges, you've literally got a taco, speedo, fuel gauge and a temperature gauge. Nothing exciting at all. They did add a Momo steering wheel, which is a nice touch, and the seats themselves, they've got good bolstering and they're pretty good to sit in. So all these years later, I've got to say, it's not perfect, it does have its faults, but in a nutshell, it's a hell of a lot of fun to drive, still. And for a four cylinder, it's got a noise you never get sick of. The WRX's appeal was so strong it became a global phenomenon, not to mention one of the world's most modified vehicles. It really did start a new era of performance cars. That's what makes the original WRX a true classic.